to keep our hearts open to your will. It is our Savior's name we pray. Amen. Let us be an example of what God wants us to do here on earth. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus that may that he may dip his the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in these flames. Two different surrounding, two different environments, two different places. The rich man is in one place and Lazarus is in another. God is indicating and Jesus is indicating in this parable that after death there is a destination for you and it is based on your life here on earth. It is determined by your life here on earth. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in these flames. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest the good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And besides, all this between us and they there, is a great gulf fixed, so that they which which would pass from hence unto to you cannot, neither can they pass unto us that would come from them. In other words, you're separated by a large gulf, and neither can reach the other, neither can go or come. There can be transportation, cannot be a transport between the two entities or the two places. As some time later, both men died. At some time later, the both men died. The beggar who had been carried to his begging station had been carried by an angel to be placed on blessed described as Abraham's bosom. The rich man would have no doubt been buried in a lavish service, while letters would have been unceremonious and buried in a pauper's grave. Yet there was not the end of the story. Yet this was not the end of the story. Compare that. The note was made earlier as we were talking about how people are buried. Some people go through life with absolutely nothing, and then when they are buried, laid in a grave, they are splurged and pumpered, laid in lavishness, coffins up to ten and twelve and twenty thousand dollars just for that, with jewelry and all kind of other stuff and flowers and this and that. And when in life they got a near mere smithering of that, pennies of that in this life. What is the decadence and what is the reason? What why is that? What is the reason that's the soundness of that? Why not give him you have heard the saying, give me my flowers, let me smell my flowers, see my flowers while I live. That is the driving point on that. How ironic. How ironic. How ironic is that? Yet this is not the end of the story. There is life after death. Again, there is life after death. Whereas the rich man lived the life of luxury and ease and extreme comfort in his life on earth, his life here on earth. How about that? His life here on earth. He found himself in torment in Hades. The word Hades, the word Hades, H-A-D-E-S in verse 23 is something used for the abode of the dead generally, not just the place of torment for the evil dead. How ironic. Although the rich man never showed any pity toward Lazarus, he now asked Abraham to have pity on him. How about that? How about that? We note that Abraham was rewarded as the father of faith for the Jewish people. He wanted Abraham to send to all people, Lazarus to aid him, to send to all people, Lazarus to aid him. Verse 24, in such a torment, the rich man wanted Lazarus to put the tip of his finger in some water. And so doing, 
the rich man hoped it would ease the agony of the fires of torment. On cue, Abraham reminded the rich man that the tables have been turned. The tables have been turned. While the rich man lived a life of ease before he died, watching Lazarus live lives lived as an abandoned sick beggar, still even if Abraham wanted to assist the rich man, he could not. How about that? There was a great chasm between the two places that prevented passage in verse 26. While the rich man lived a life of ease before he died, watching Lazarus life, life, live life as an abandoned sick beggar. Again, clearly understanding the words in which I speak. While the rich man lived a life of ease before he died, watching Lazarus' life, live life as an abandoned sick beggar. Still even, if Abraham wanted to assist the rich man, he could not. There was a great chasm between the two places that prevented passage. Why is it that any significant number of people either do not believe in life after death or deny that hell exists? Everyone can think of times when he or she has said or done things that can never be undone. While there is still time, what would you make right before it is too late? What would you make right before it is too late? Then he said, I pray thee before Father that I would send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into the place of torment. Now, here is a line of thought that appears not to never enter into the rich man's mindset of compassion and thinking about other people other than himself while he was alive. He is now dead and in a different place of torment, and now he is thinking another way. What is that? Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. To you that are here now, that hear this message, you have guys like me, guys like preachers, guys like other people standing up and telling you the truth. There seems to be a mindset now that people will not hear the people that are with them, telling them of this or that and other. What about this nation and the mindset of the illegals and the immigrants and those of that nature that are going through things right now? What about the rich and the famous? What about the poor? What about the angelicals? What about the people that are supposed to be believing in God? What is the mindset today, June the 24th, 2018, in the year of our Lord? In the year 1955, in the year 1975, in the year 2010, in the year 2020, 20, in the years to come. What about the mindset of the people right now, today, today, today? Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. Who do you know that have come from the dead other than Jesus Christ, our Savior, our interceder, who sits at the right hand of the Father, which is God's Son, God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit that have risen from the dead? Who do you know that has came back from the dead and gave you any news that were beneficial to you, good or bad? Who do you know? The only person that I know is Jesus Christ, God Almighty, and his word is written in the words in which I speak and speak to you from his word. He left the Holy Spirit with us to care care of us and guide us and lead us into all truths. Our Father, he's waiting at the right hand of the Father right now, and he's waiting to hear you say, Our Father, which art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thou art the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
This is how Jesus taught his disciples to pray. How often do you pray? How often do you call on the Father who is at the right hand of Jesus, at the right hand of God? How often do you call on Jesus who is sitting at the right hand of the Father? How often? And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded. The one rose from the dead. How about that? Listen to those words. And they said unto him, and he said unto him, talking to Lazarus now, talking to the rich man now, talking to the rich man about him going over and doing something about him going back and telling his brothers who may no doubt may be richer or richer. This rich man is talking about and now here is his answer as he requested that somebody go to his brothers and tell them about this place. Guess who is telling you about this place right now? You're listening to a voice. You may not know, you may not see, you may not hear, you may not have seen, but you hear my words from a voice. And it is saying unto you right now, if they hear not Moses, if you hear not Moses, if you hear not this voice that is speaking to you now, and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. How about that? Do you believe Jesus Christ, God Almighty, our Creator, who sits at the right hand of the Father? Do you hear him and believe him? How about that? How about that? He said unto them, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be convinced, even if someone rose from the dead. We have given the rich man's credit. We have to give the rich man credit. He quickly realized that his faith was sealed. It was too late for him. So he thought about his family. Verse 27, how many of you today think about your family and your brothers and your sisters? They lived the same way that he had. Again, the rich man wanted Abraham to send Lazarus to do something for him. The rich man wanted Lazarus to warn his five brothers about the fate that awaited them if they did not make a change in their lives. As in the documentary, Scared Straight, the rich man hoped to shock his brothers into the way that saved them from eternal damnation. Talking about a person in prison, a person that had went over dry in this world, and they are now in chains, are in lockdown, are in death row, are in some place where they cannot be. So they said, they come back and they tell folks that are walking in the same path, trying to scare them straight. Just like him, the rich man's brother had every opportunity to listen to the writings of the Old Testament, verse 29, that was Abraham shared. They just had not heeded these words. That sounds an awful like, like the faith that awaits many who do not heed the gospel message that can, but continue in their way to eternal damnation, still attempting to get his way as he had done in his eternal earthly life. How ironic. Living on this earthly life, it can lead to how you will live in eternity. Oh, still attempts to get his way, as he had done in his earthly life. The rich man told Abraham that his brothers saw something from the dead. Abraham, that if his brothers saw someone from the dead, they would repent. Abraham ended that in his dialogue with the rich man by telling him, the rich man, that his brothers hadn't listened to the words of the Old Testament and certainly would not listen to the words of a person raised from the dead. Verse 31, verse 31, prophesies the disbelief that will be typical of the Jewish leadership in Jerusalem after Jesus' resurrection. The power of God's word. How would you respond to Lazarus? were to show up at your door tomorrow morning or show up at your door right now? How would you respond? Some people ignore the message that God has already sent to them. However, they would travel hundreds of miles to hear a big-time evangelist. The Word of God is the Word of God. What do you think? How about that today? People spend money and millions of dollars traveling to mega churches to hear some people speak. Whereas your pastor stands every day from the pulpit 
or your friend every day telling you about Jesus Christ. The word of God is the word of God. What do you do?